Okay, so a checking account. Let me go ahead and copy and paste one onto my, let me, let me copy and paste a deposit check, a deposit slip and a checking, a blank check here onto my screen. This way I can uh, lecture here. Boom. If you guys want to put money into my account, that's what you're going to use, a deposit slip. I'll give you some extra stamps if you guys put money into my account. Okay. Uh, let me go ahead and copy the check also. Here we go. Blank check. And we'll be rocking and rolling. There we go. Nice. All right. So, um, Could someone tell me the difference between a deposit slip and a check? What's the difference? What do I use each? So I have an account, a checking account at the bank. They keep my money. When would I use this versus when would I use this? Okay, but tell me. Hit it, Sandoval. Um, the deposit to take money out? Deposit to take money out? Oh, wait. Right, so this is to put money in. Money in, okay? And this is money out, right? Money in versus money out. Again, if you want extra stamps, just give me some cash. Go to the local Chase. Okay, that's my account number right here. You can, put in, you can put in as much money as you want. I'll give you a dollar. <laughs> what should be the going rate for stamps? Just pay Mogia for some stamps, that'd be cool. Um, <laughs> so, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go over an example of how to fill out a deposit slip, one of these, and then how to write a check, one of these. Okay? And then you're going to do one on your own with a partner. Um, that's it. Mark today is done. Simple. Now, there's this thing called a routing number. On every check or deposit slip. So look at this. This is, this is the routing number and this is your checking account. Routing number. Go ahead and put that on your note guide. So I just passed out a piece of note paper, that blank check. Go ahead and circle that and put routing number, routing number on both the deposit slip and your checking account. Or your check and deposit slip, go ahead and circle, put routing number. And on the second number, go ahead and put account number. So when you open a, uh, an account at Wells Fargo or Chase or Citibank, they're going to give you your account number. It's going to be on your deposit slip and on your check. Account number. So far, so good. What in the world is in a, a routing number? What is that all about? Well, let's watch this. Let's just watch this video together. It's real simple. It talks about a routing number. It's one minute long. Watch this. Pretty interesting. Michael so Phelps, Phelps. Phelps. That exists on a check that the ADA assigns. The ADA stands for the America's Bankers Association. The ADA routing number identifies is a unique code that exists on a check that the ADA assigns. The ADA is a unique code that exists on a check that the ADA assigns. The ADA stands for the America's Bankers Association. The ADA routing number identifies the financial institution that's issued the check. Banks and other financial institutions based in the USA that own accounts at the Federal Reserve Bank use the nine-digit ADA routing number. They use it to process check transactions 
including clearance and deposits. So it kind of has to do, it's, it's like a code number that's related to the bank that you have your account in, whether it's Wells Fargo, Chase, Bank of America, blah, blah, blah. The United States has hundreds of banks, tens of thousands of branches, and hundreds of millions of bank accounts. A lot of them. The ABA routing number, which consists of a nine-digit code, identifies banks in the U.S. The number helps other banks and financial institutions transfer money to and from a customer's account for transactions like automatic bill payments or direct deposits. The ABA routing number has important information for the financial institution. The first two numbers indicate the type of financial institution. The next two indicate the Federal Reserve Bank District Branch. See, everything means the next something. four numbers give us information on the institution where the checking account is held. While the last number is the single check digit. A bank might have many ABA routing numbers. Therefore, it is important to make sure you use the ABA routing number that is specific to your account. This is the one in your checkbook, deposit slip, or the number they give you if you contact the bank. Over the past couple of decades, there have been several mergers and acquisitions. Whenever banks merge, the new entity ends up with multiple codes. All right, so that's the ABA routing number, just for your info, just for your information. Um, so back over here. Uh, questions so far? So today's a very basic lecture. This is a very basic life skill lesson today. How to fill one of these puppies out. How to put money in the bank, how to take money out. That's all we're going to learn today. Uh, let's deposit some cash into my bank account. I need some money anyway. Here we go. Uh, so, somewhere on the blank area of that, that handout I gave you, somewhere on the blank area, go to write down this example. Okay. Copy and paste this example here from the textbook here. Give me a second here. Uh, where are you at? There you are. And there it is. So we're only going to do one example of a deposit, one of a check, and we're done. So, can I go to chapter four? Is that example? I'm going to copy and paste. So, so Sabine, do you have a bank account anywhere? Um, or not yet? I mean, like a debit card, yeah. Oh, so you do? You have your own bank bank account then? How about you, Ramos? Yeah, I'm like it. Wow, you guys are already ahead of the game. How are you, Anto? Don't you let us know yet? Uh, yeah, I, I didn't start till late. Alvarez, do you have a bank account? Thanks, Alvarez. <laughs> Hold up here. That's the one. That's the one. Uh, so how you guys? How, why do you guys have a bank account? You guys are not working. Do you work, Sidney? I mean, I help my parents. That's cool. That's and they pay you. Like yeah. an allowance? Like allowance? Yeah. That's cool. How about you, Ramos? If you're not working, why do you have a bank account? I uh, basically you just hack people's accounts and put some money in my account. One more time? I just hack people's accounts and put some money into my account. Okay, if you want, I'll give you I'll give you mine so you can just take money from mine and put it in your account. <laughs> I'll do that later, okay? I'll I'll join that that crowd. <laughs> How about you, Sanibal? You got a job, you got a bank account? All right. Wait, what? You guys know something I don't? When I was raised, I didn't have a bank account until I started working. <laughs> What's going on? All right, so go ahead and write this down. Jacob Thomas had a deposit of two checks, 341 and, seven, four, and, 341 and 79 cents and 1796. In cash, he had 30, $35 $1 bills, $17 $5 bills, $44 $10 bills, 54 quarters, 36 dimes. 32 nickels and 21 pennies. So he's going to deposit all this. Dang. 
copy that down. All right. Let's pretend Jacob is going to deposit this into his savings account, not his checking account. Savings accounts, they'll, the bank will actually put money into a savings account the longer you hold it. It's a very small percent, like 1% a year. Uh, it's just a place to keep, keep your savings. Uh, checking is where you pay, pay bills and uh, write checks for money to be paid. So let's pretend he's going to dep deposit all this money into his savings account. So up here, we're going to specify what account. So we're going to put a, a check on savings. We're going to pretend we're Jacob right now. We're actually going to even forge a signature in a little while. We're going to involve ourselves in some illegal activity. Okay. Um, he's got two checks. This one and this one. So right here on the deposit slip, notice it has a spot for checks right there. And then look, it has another one for total from other side. In other words, if you have a bunch of checks, you'd like, let's say you're a business owner and you just got paid by a bunch of heads and people who owed you money with checks. On the other side of the deposit slip, which I wasn't able to Xerox, but on the other side would be a bunch of lines where you can add all the checks one by one. Okay, since we only have two checks here for this deposit, Mr. Thomas, Jacob Thomas, what we're going to do is we're going to put one check right here. So put 341 79. And the other check from the other side, as if we filled out the other side, there's only one other check, so we're going to put 1796. Notice how the deposit slip already gives you the decimal, right? 1796. So we got the checks covered. So far so good. And now right here is where we're gonna fill out the cash that's gonna go along with our checks. So let's see, we got 35 $1 bills, so that's 35 bucks so far. Okay, I got the $1 bills. 17 $5 bills, so 17 times five. Let's see. 17 times 5 is, is 17 times 5 is 85 bucks. So $85 in five, $5 bills, $44, $10 bills, so that's going to be uh, 440 bucks in tens, right? Got the ten dollar bills done. Fifty four quarters. Fifty four quarters is going to be fifty four times. Watch this now. Times point two five, right? Twenty five cents times fifty four. Let's see what that is. Twenty five times point two five. Oops. Twenty five times zero point two five. Six twenty five. So six dollars and twenty five cents. No, no, that's, that's more, huh? 0 0.25 times 54. 13.50, that didn't seem right. $13.50 in quarters. Okay. 36 dimes. 36 dimes is going to be $3.60. So it would be um, 36 times 0 0.10, right? 10 cents. That's going to be $3.60. So far, so good. 32 nickels. So that's going to be 32 times 5 cents, 0.05. There we go. 32 times 0 0.05. 0 0.05. There we go. A buck 60 in nickels. And 21 pennies, so it's 0.21. There's the cash. I'm going to add all that stuff up. Questions so far? 
Now, typically, your deposit is not going to be this much cash. This is assuming this guy's like maybe a vendor or something. That he has a small business, so he's going to deposit all this cash from the day, the day's work or something. Um, here we go. So thirty-five. I'm going to add it all up. Thirty-five and ones. Eighty-five and fives. Uh, four hundred forty in tens. Thirteen fifty in quarters. Three dollars and sixty cents in nickels. A buck sixty in whatever. Forgot. Plus twenty-one pennies. Five hundred ninety-nine dollars and seventy cents. Did my math go wrong? Because my copy hasn't kicked in yet. Is that cool? One thing else that look right? 599.70. Look at where it's going to go. Where cash goes. 599.70. So far, so good. Subtotal. Okay. We're going to add all that up. Let's go right here. And the cash back, sometimes people want some cash right away from what their deposit is. You'd write that right here. But Jacob's not going to take out any cash today. So what we're going to do is we're going to skip the subtotal. We would do the subtotal if he was going to take out some cash. If he wanted some cash back for going to go buy a burger or something, he would put that right here. But he's not taking any cash back. So what we're going to do is we're going to skip the subtotal. We're just going to go right to the total. We would do the subtotal, like I said, if we got some cash back. So the total then is, here we go. I'm going to add up all this garbage here. The checks with the cash. I trust this is pretty straightforward. This is nothing crazy. It's not rocket science. 599.70 plus 341.79. Plus 1796. So 959.45. 959.45 cents. Okay. Today's date. Today is the 29th. Customer name, Jacob Thomas. This is the only time we'll involve ourselves in illegal activity in Mugia's class. Go ahead and forge Jacob's signature. Man, that's a nice signature, man. Look at that. Okay. Now, this would be if you're going to deposit money into someone's account, you'd actually have to write your their account number here. And they would have to give that to you. Uh, so like Ramos, he's going, to, uh, he's going to give me his account number so I can start pouring money into his account. But we'll, we'll take care of that later, Ramos, so I can join that crowd of people who just give you money. That's going to be cool. Uh, so that's if you're going to put money into someone's account, this is where it would be. But you guys are not going to do that today. And that'll be it. You give that to the teller at the bank, and then she'll process that to you. All that cash would go right into your account, this account right there. And you'd probably see that the same day. Sometimes it takes a delay, a day or two, for it to actually process where you're able to get the money. Um, and that's that. That's the deposit slip. Now, let's write a check, and we're done. Go to flip the page, the check. So, all right. Um, so we got a blank check. And let's say, um, let's say I pass you with an A in my class and I charge you 
like 120 bucks. Okay? You're going to write me a check. I'm going to make it more difficult so we can actually write it out because you're going to have to learn how to write numbers today and re remember how to write numbers. We're going to actually write it out in cursive. Uh, that's how you write a check. So let's say you got an A in my class. That means I charge you to get an A. You owe Mungia uh, $121.73. Let's say I involve myself in legal activity and I'm charging students for A's and, and I don't get caught and you're, you're going to pay me, you're going to write me a check for an A+. plus. So you're going to write Mr. Mungia a check for $121.73. So when I, I take your check to my bank, it's going to have my name on it. So go and write Mr. Mungia. You're paying me. So whoever you're paying, that's, that's who you're writing it to. And I'm going to put the 121.73. Okay. Four. Um, I'm going to put good grade. So Mungia is involved in an illegal grade scam. <laughs> and then you're going to put your signature right here. Go ahead and sign that puppy. Sign your check. Now the hardest part of writing a check is actually writing the amount in cursive. Okay, so this is where you have to pay attention. So, $121.73, this is the way I'm gonna write it. You start off with a capital, 100, and that's two separate words. 100, and then 21 has a dash in between. Whenever you're going from the tens to the ones, you always put a dash in between. So it's going to be 100, 20, look at this, dash 1. And then the cents, I'm going to put, and how much of a dollar is 73? Well, it's 73 hundreds. Look at it. And 73 hundreds dollars. So I put the 73 cents as 73 over 100 because that's how many dollars 73 cents. It's the 73 hundreds of a dollar. So 121 and 73 hundredths of a dollar. Sign that puppy. Here's my signature. And that's how you write a check. The main thing I want you to see though is the 21, there's that dash. And you start off with a capital letter when you write a check. Okay? Somewhere in the blank spot, somewhere in the blank area of that same site, let's go ahead and write 1,322 and 53, or let's say 36 cents. Let's write this out together. Okay, let's write it out. So there you go, with a capital letter now. 1,000, no commas, 300, which is a space in between. 1,300, look at this, 20, since I'm going from the the tens to the ones, I put the dash, 22. And how would I write the cents? 1,322 and how would I write the cents? Like that. So the dash went between the tens and the ones place only. 
The dash went in between the tens and the ones place only. 